Welcome to my channel, Canines First. I'm Susan Stroh. I've been working with pet dogs and their people for 24 years as a trainer. My co-host for today's video is Alexis Daniel. Alexis' mother was a professional groomer, breeder, and handler in the show ring, which led to Alexis becoming an AKC junior handler, and when she was old enough, she helped her parents by managing their boarding, daycare, and grooming facility. During the time she wasn't working for her parents' dog-focused business, she spent 10 years as a veterinary technician. She's retired from the dog game professionally, but still participates in volunteer work. Like, there can be two different kinds of walks, which, you know, we've talked about before. There can be the potty walk, and we're exploring and sniff, but maybe it's because I have a yard. Most of my walks are business. We're exercising. You should be paying attention yeah. to me. I want, no, you can't stop. Um, and I think that's the difference. It's not, it's like you said a couple of times ago, it's not the never. We're never going to let you sniff. It's most walks should be about exercise and paying attention to me. And I, I don't, maybe it's a, uh, it depends on what kind of dog you have. Like, they, you know, some don't need the business walk. Some do. This may be a repeat, but. I try to explain to people that have hired me, one, I think they've called a trainer for a reason. They're yeah. not happy with their situation. Yeah. And I say, you, you're walking your dog already. So you have two times a day already built in for the yeah. time and the effort. Which is half the battle. Most people probably don't bother. To straighten out your relationship with the dog, why don't you use the walk for it? Yeah. It's yeah. not that hard. Well, and I don't know. Exactly. You're already putting in that effort. Mm -hmm. Use the effort the right way. And yeah. I don't know why people get so hung up. Um, I think they get hung up because one, they're not professionals. And so nobody's told them, nobody's told them they're, they're seeing what comes across their feed. And a lot of what comes across their feed, in my opinion, is opinion from the millennial generation. Every generation has their contributions theories. yeah theories and, and sometimes some good contributions that will stick but i don't think this is going to be one of them i hope it's not but you know millennials are doing i think the most of the posting or gen yeah. z on instagram and they're the one that's coming up with this because they just haven't gone through this evolution of you know what this is actually quite awful <laughs> it's not working <laughs> and I didn't realize my clients also had kids and jobs. Yeah. And maybe they're not as physically able yeah. as I am. I mean, these are just one of the arguments. Yeah. So anyway, and ultimately, I think it's shame. Yeah. They don't want somebody to see them mm -mm. not exploring mm -hmm. the flowers. Oh, you make your dog heal. And sit at the core dogs. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Because they're so certain in these statements they make on their reels. Do you make your dog heal? That's not natural. Your dog needs to sniff. Oh, so what's natural? <laughs> you know what else isn't natural is keeping an dog. animal in your house. <laughs> yeah, putting a collar on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of this. Yeah. Which, yeah, that always reminds me of like, you know, in the 80s and 90s. Peta peta, however you want to oh, say it. You, um, you got to keep one foot in the bowl. Interesting. That's my uh, style. <laughs> um, you know, that was their whole thing is crates were bad. Uh -huh. So they would go to dog shows and horse shows and they would free the animals. And it's not natural. But yeah, what, none of this, none is, of this natural. is natural. <laughs> yeah. Shasha, I'm natural. I do my best every day <laughs> to make it as natural as I can Yeah, within where i live yeah and yeah which is appropriate for society which always brings me to the circular logic you know which we've again we've said it before um it's until you have that dog like how i know or what, that lifestyle how i know what to do with some dogs is because i mean the first dog i had was a miniature poodle that I took with me everywhere. We started yeah. a business out of our house. So boarding was there. Grooming was there. And then she was seven when my parents opened Highstone. And I mean, complete had to go to the vet 
was hated going to boarding, grooming, anything like that because she'd never done it before. And I was like, oh, I guess you have to socialize them. Like a little 19 year old me didn't know. Like I was socializing them. We had a kennel of dogs over Living there your life. and a kennel dog over there. Yeah. And then, you know, you get the next dog and you learn. I think that's the, having a whole bunch of dogs that I've done the wrong thing with mm -hmm. makes it real easy to know, like, no, please don't do that. <laughs> please do not feed them face to face. Please do not, you know, all of these things is, and it's sort of like, you know, I always think it's like kids, you know, what to do when you messed up and you go, man, we shouldn't yeah. have done it that way. And you also know your 2.5 kids you had, you don't know everything yeah. about all the kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, to go get, might as well introduce Cherry. Cherry. Who is about four months old. I think the most, all the baby teeth are out. We think oh, she's a Carolina girl? dog. Oh, she might be five months are you getting? Are you getting Six, there? Yeah. I don't know. I'm guessing 35 pounds maxing she's out. She's a pretty good girl. And we would love to know anybody's point of view about her Carolina dog status. I'm interested in all feedback. <laughs> Somebody told me that um, a DNA test may or may not be able to confirm. And I have an email out to the... Embark. Or one of no, those. the man that I don't know the right word, but he decided as he was observing them in his environment where he lives that these dogs that were just assumed wild dogs mm -hmm. were actually special. Are and, you special? Yeah, yeah. I'm she real is special. A, she is a lover. She's, She's a, a good. Lover. She was real good with. Uh, I was gonna bring Missy, my little toy poodle, but um, we had too much activity, so I thought she needed to stay with her pack today. But she was real good at brunch with her. She was a good bruncher. She's a good dog, dog in many, 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 well, many ways. Well, come on, Dan. And you don't have to groom her. Yay! No grooming. That's my microphone. I'm not in a hurry to get rid of her. I enjoy her a great deal. <sighs> <laughs> you know and she's skittish by nature of her dna which would make sense because of them living out in the wild she uh and then just recently being brought in to society as pets since the 70s so crazy 1970s but she adapts and that's what the um that's what the paperwork says. They're adaptable, and she's proving that to be the case. She, she, and you know, city she's life down for trying it. City life is there's a lot to it, take in. It'll for throw, yes, yes, yes. Her little brain. It's a lot. It's funny watching her. She's getting used to figure it, out stuff. Yeah, I'm getting all figured out. Yeah, I. Okay. When I walked her a couple <laughs> months ago, you know, when she would see other dogs, and they'd pass, she'd bark as they pass. What? Like, yeah, you better keep walking. And then now I haven't seen She's her like, do that. Oh, yeah, I do this all the time now. No big deal. I'm kind of the queen of the trail. Thank you. I wanted you to explain to people what's the difference between a kill shelter and a non kill oh. shelter and why a kill shelter is essential to the community. So, you know what? I hadn't even, uh, but what made me first think about this is Whole Dog Journal, which you know, good or bad. I don't even know if it's still in existence anymore. I it was it, a, is. it was a publication mm -hmm. that was very popular, late 90s, early 2000s. And they sort of were one of the first people that would, that I saw that would publish like, okay, let's look at all the canned food. Okay, let's look at all the different training. And I felt like they were pretty balanced. Now they did sometimes, I feel like go a little too far left. And some of the medical and things like that like you know i'm all for as natural as possible but i'm also going to give heartworm prevention mm -hmm. um yeah and so they were one of the first ones that i read an article about their sort of research in like european and why america and why kill shelters are essential um and then, you know, I I moved to Lubbock where there was a 
horrible city shelter that all of the vets and all of the techs and a lot of interested parties were really trying to fix, but it would be, you know, someplace you would want to support, but you couldn't because every dog was having these horrible outcomes, you know, distemper, which is a brutal, you know, neurologic. So you get, is it always death? If oh, there was a lot of it? death. Uh, well, no, no, okay. um, but they can recover it's if they get gross. treated. Yeah. Um, well, there's no treatment for it, but sometimes they're like, we're pretty sure Milo had distemper. That's what all his weird tics and neurologic okay. stuff. So you but can recover from it, but you might have long lasting. Yeah. And damage. you know, it's viral. So sometimes okay. it's also violent seizures that they can't live with. Oh, I see. Um, but you know, there was just, okay, well, what do you do when there's a loose dog? Okay. Well, what do you do when, um, you know, your neighbor had a litter of puppies and Nobody pushes them out. Them. Like, you know, it puts the onus on cities that's right. and the community to fix the problem. Well, yeah. sometimes that's not an option. Um, like in San Angelo, where I'm from, uh, I guess it was last year, maybe the year before they had a city shelter. And so the people thought, oh, no, it's a beautiful new building. It's maybe 10 years old. We have a city shelter. Um, you go visit it and it's just stacks of cages with dogs that never get let out dogs that, um, are just soaked in urine. They are unadoptable because they have not been They're unsocialized. socialized. It's just rabid pit bulls and chihuahuas mm -hmm. screaming at the front, you know, not safe for home environments yeah. and getting well, worse in that situation. So couple of friends went and told their vets like hey have you been to the shelter it's horrific roaches yeah. everywhere flies mm -hmm. i mean it was exactly what you think a city shelter is a worst case scenario got it got shut down well fast forward six months we go to christmas to visit family and we take all three of our dogs like we always do and we could barely walk there's loose dogs there's stray cats i mean it's a public health situation so when people say you know no kills right no kills right well there are good no kill shelters here in town in dallas area however isn't there a capacity issue <laughs> however what that means is that no kill you don't have to take everything that's right so if it has to flow down dangerous somewhere. dog that should not be in a home that is aggressive has bit multiple people comes for drop off SPCA operation kindness dog and kitty city can say oh we don't have room we can't take that by refusing them they are condemning them then they have to go it's not to fault. animal shelter I mean, yeah that's just the way right. they run their um shelter dallas animal services they can't turn them away has to accept right. what comes in um, which means because it's more than just housing a dog for adoption, right? It's or loose because he's got a microchip, yeah. Um, or horrible. What kills me is oh, Rufus has lived in the backyard for ten years. He's sick. We take him to the animal shelter because we know he's about to die, and we don't want to deal with that. Yeah. So then we have to put that on the shelter. Well. Could he be medically fixed? Yes, with mm -hmm. thousands of dollars. Right. And but nobody's ponying up. And maybe has never had medical care. Mm -hmm. So who who takes on all of these horrible, difficult medical? Well, mm -hmm. the rescues. Well, guess what? All the rescues are tapped out. Yep. Um, anybody that fosters already has multiple fosters, yep. including, you know, in addition to their own pack. That's right. And so that... We're out of room. I you don't we, want to support you know when we no first started our little foster <laughs> good luck um no I just write my check uh -huh. um and you know when we started our little thing I hadn't been to the Dallas Animal Services maybe 20 years mm -hmm. and it used to be just wow. pretty bare bones I mean yeah. they're still doing what they could I was shocked to find out how clean it is, mm -hmm. how much staff they had, how people were 
actively managing the dogs, how many great adoptable dogs there were. And, you know, I think a lot of that did stem from a few years ago. They had a bad situation, a bad Mm -hmm. rep. There was a lot of loose dogs that weren't getting picked up and they have made, you know, a lot of turnaround, but what that takes is money. Yes, it does. And so, you know, feeding 400 dogs every day. And if you read the, uh oh. Yeah, not right now. I feel like this <laughs> is bell abuse. And you could probably wait. She usually gets bored. She wants to go lay in the sun. <laughs> I mean, don't we all? Uh huh. Don't we saw you TT outside you though? Work. Don't be a liar. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, anytime somebody says, don't take them to the Dallas Animal Services, it's a kill shelter. Mm-hmm. Okay, just let them run the street then. Right. And like, well, at least but they had danger. an option of getting adopted. Yeah. Number that's one. True. And there's number, a chance in heck. Number two, mm-hmm. what do you do when it's 110 outside? Terrible. They like, need shelter. It's, it's why it's called the shelter. At least they're getting they water, food. food. Um, yeah. A roof. Or somebody to look at them and say, hey, you know, this looks like a chihuahua. Let's call it chihuahua mm-hmm. rescue where it they can ch- be it is a chance. You're right. um, marketed it's a little a, better. It's a good chance. Um, and then the other thing is this perception that they're a me- like <laughs> in the door, needle in arm, yeah. put to sleep. <laughs> Just, Which makes me insane because there's so many great volunteers that are okay. working their butts off to market highly adoptable dogs. Yep. And if you follow any of them on social media or if you, I mean, just go to Pet Harbor. Some of the dogs have been there 40 days, 50 days with people actively trying to get them adopted. Um, and, and granted, I don't think we're going to adopt our way out of this mess, no, but not. I think they... Dallas Animal Services and most city shelters. They're doing what they can with the resources try, they have. And try really hard to get the dogs adopted. Um, you know, I thought it was interesting. Was it no, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, we had Clear the Shelter. Yep. And it was the first time there was not complete, you know, out on the news. Usually Channel 4, 5, and 8 have... Show how they're all empty. And Mesquite, McKinney, it's Not all these pictures of empty and, you know, just the workers standing there leaning there on their mops. no PR. There was, you know, all even SBCA was saying, it goes on the whole weekend. They were promoting. So I found that really interesting that this year, mm-hmm. no shelters were cleared, um, which I think you know, is indicative of a bigger problem we have here. There's nothing wrong with supporting the rescue of your choice. Absolutely. But there's also nothing wrong with supporting it at the government level. Yeah. That's and where they're the most us. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's I agree. That's... You know, that's where I was. <laughs> Just from the street. It gave me a drink. <laughs> so oh, num, that's num. not going to turn out well for you, ma'am. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't even care about this. What's this. I'm a lobster. <laughs> I know. You don't have to give it. And a lighter note, I saw a fun reel oh. that said male or female. I, I thought that's a fun topic when you're picking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do love that. I mean. I don't have a preference. I look at the individuals. Do you? I do. I, I, I pre- think let's narrow it down. Personality. I prefer, like, if, so, if I've never seen them, never met them. Yeah. My tendency is generally to boys late male but um i also look at my pack like uh-huh. when i was getting okay. my last dog uh-huh. i thought i need a girl yeah and i'm never oh, that's a good point don't tell my husband but i'm probably gonna always be a multiple dog yeah. house so sometimes it's a matter of timing of what right. mixes so if you had an empty house and all things being equal you girl. might lean you'd lean girl i want a bossy okay bitchy but with the pack you have now you might lean boy yeah okay um and that's just because of like my personality i like a dog i can correct that they don't get their little feelings yeah. hurt and they're yeah. sensitive yeah. um which is why i like girls yeah boys are easier i feel like to mix with a pack huh. usually mm-hmm. huh. but also previously mean chihuahua dictated what we could have yeah mean chihuahua only liked boys so we had boys for a while yeah 
um then he got older and we said well it's Let's not up to you anymore let yeah see what happens and, and things have gone well he since you brought the last girl in um lets her yell at him like nobody has ever been allowed to like she'll come and sleep directly on him and it's been fine i think he's given up okay what if you only had a female in your home let's assume that she is a well-adjusted healthy young adult probably gonna get a boy okay gonna yeah. balance it out yeah it's funny i know clients that seem to prefer one over the other oh, yeah. when they have multiples the last word that i came from before we started talking about an hour ago was three three girls mm -hmm. and i would say as somebody who lived with somebody my mom bred and mm -hmm. showed dogs my whole entire life females were always first everybody wanted girls oh okay everybody so that seems to be the choice everybody always wanted girls and I think it's maybe this. It's in their head. Um, boys mark. Oh, that's right. Boys mark. They just pee everywhere. Yeah. It's just free peeing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. If you're not going to train your boy, it might mark everywhere. Right. Regardless if you neuter it. Right. <laughs> um, that's a good point. I think boys' reproductive systems are easier to care for when it comes to the. Oh, man. The neutering and the spaying. Yeah. So I, don't, I have no respect for your production. More, more, more. Yeah. yeah. Again? Um, more to, yeah. Yay. Yeah. Thanks, Cherry. Good job. <laughs> You're a good <laughs> PA. <laughs> You're not. I know you're bored. You're just going to have to make use of the What is the, the one that nobody knows? The gaffer or whatever. Uh -huh. Democratic. What's oh. a gaffer? I, I find sometimes if, and it's just, I'm always playing fantasy games because uh -huh. I probably never have a dog of my own choosing of its gender or its name or its breed. Right. Yeah. But sometimes when I play favorites, yeah, fantasy game, I, depending on the breed may depend on the gender. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like I might pick a Malinois boy. I might pick a Cocker Spaniel girl. Right. Your Cocker's like girls to me. No offense. Yeah. It's like all Persian cats are girls. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah um Stop. yeah that's true too Stop. that's that's definitely true like um i don't know why because like all the german shepherds that i loved were the girlies were boys they were boys but yeah if i mm -hmm. was gonna go pick out my own uh -huh. i don't oh i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry uh -huh. i'm sorry um yeah i think it is funny how people get stuck on a, yeah. a breed versus a behavior uh-huh and and you know people or, ask or me that even gender versus yeah. behavior. People always ask me, you know, what's your favorite breed? And I I really I used to be exclusively a poodle person, and mm -hmm. there's still probably my tendency. But I think the doodles ruined that for me because now I'm so well. They're also diluted. Is there really even a poodle anymore? Or oh man. They're rare, rare sighting anymore. Yeah. I get pretty psyched when I see one. Yeah. There's a, I, I stopped the lady. I know you've seen her, the black mm -hmm. one yep. on the trail. Absolutely. This, on Sunday when I was running, I took my headphones out and I said, I know you probably get this a lot, but, but I'm really happy to see a real poodle in its real form. Mm -hmm. That's what I grew up with. And she said, me too. Oh. <laughs> So, they are good dogs. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason everybody mixes it. But yeah, I, I, I think it is funny how, and I bet you there's a lot of people out there that like, I grew up with a girl. I'm always gonna have a girl. Yeah. Never gonna. I know some people have hangups about boy parts. So don't want to see them. Yeah. It's just gross. Yeah. Understandable, but that's how my mother is. But I also, you know, here's my weird. You know, I guess I've always adopted old, broken too. But I always feel bad for the girls when they get older. And then you know, they have to at squat. Them. Like your uh, hips and knees yeah. hurt. With a boy, he just gets to stand there. That's true. Um, just let it out. Oh, She's so sort of break out. speaking <laughs> about the. Um, I don't know. We seem to be talking about like outdated mentality. Mm -hmm. So I got you. 
full transparency. I did not read it. I skimmed it. The article, I don't know if you've had a chance no, to read I it. Haven't. I haven't what, either. Was there anything interesting that you well, pulled from it? So I Garden and Gun, Mm -hmm. I think it's this month, so it's October's issue. Beautiful picture. Is what it's like how to train or how to pick. It was a few things. They threw a few subjects in. (laughs) Sir, sir, that is inappropriate. I don't need your body near my face. Um, How to train your your dog. And obviously they're geared more towards hunting dogs, but I thought, you know, that's kind of how you know, in the sixties and seventies, that's, right. that's all there was. Yeah. JB kennels. It was, you uh-huh. drop them off and they train it and they had a recall hunting way of doing things. Um, and then, cause who would train a house pet? What's somehow <laughs> that started hurting our feelings uh-huh. and we didn't like that. But I thought I, like I said, I read, you know, the first sentence of each paragraph and it was like, yep, yep. Totally agree. Yep. To- this, I wanted to edit the, title for how to train any dog and put you know i i guess gardening gun is sort of more like good housekeeping now like Mm -hmm. they always have good articles i think people see gardening gun and think oh i'm not a hunter but it's a lot of things it was a great article for just balanced training um the parts i read so i I do want to go back and touch on that article speak on that with more research yeah it uh it sort of made me think, where was the breakdown for why we don't, you know, consistency? Um, it was all these things that, like, we practice in our, you know, exercise, consistency, mm-hmm. nutrition, and all of, like, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Where was the breakdown? Some real basic stuff. When we stopped. Basic but necessary. Early 2000s, when that started uh-huh. to hurt our feelings. Yes. Um, so yeah, and what, we thought we were, were enlightened. We were By really we, woke. I mean, society. Yeah, society. And me was, too. Yeah. I, you know, I bought into it for about six years before I decided, yeah, this is not working. <laughs> I don't care about your feelings. It's not good enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You ready to go to lunch? We had on very, three very important topics, starting with stupid snip walks. Again. Kill shelters. And boys or girls. Boys or girls. I, I don't, don't care. I just want cute. And yeah, sweet. it really is more about personality, I think, with yeah. the boys or girls because His I've met some great. real Not boys. Okay, I've met some <laughs> real dumb boys. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you need a dumb boy to lighten the mix mood. in your, with you your know, bitchy. Bitches. Yeah, you know, it's, I'm sure you've you seen that bitch? Instagram that where people say I think that it's a voiceover now that people add to over videos of like. People ask me all the time, do you want a boy or a girl? Well, do you want a smart dog or do you want a dumb, happy dog? And hmm. I mean, yeah, I think it's just you got to meet. Okay. It depends on where you're at in yeah. life, probably. Yeah. Dumb and happy is good for kids. Which, you know, that's, I do yeah. struggle with the... What do you more? What kind of dog is it? When people, like if you have a mutt, what kind of dog is it? I don't care. Like, I get where you would want to know that. So maybe health, like, okay, if it's got border collie, we can't give him heart guard because he has seizures Ah. or boxers have heart problems. Like I understand medically and maybe if you have kids, you need to know, but yeah, look at the dog. Like uh, people have to, oh, well, this is a triple schnauzer Mm -hmm. booty to bop. No, he came from a puppy mill. He's not. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be real yeah. here. What do you say about I it? I shot him Korean poo poo platter. All right. Do you want to go eat? Hey, Let's see some lunch. High five. Do you no. have high five? 